Hey, you ever wonder what's inside a Pokeball? I know I sure did. So I made one. Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And in honor of Pokemon turning 25 years old, I decided to make my own Pokeball. So to make the actual shell, we're gonna use some of these Christmas baubles that I have lying around. When I say they're lying around, I mean I went out to buy them specifically to make this. Now they do have these little knobby dealies on the end to hang them, so we're just gonna chop all those off. And then we get to the layout part. Now, my original plan was to have a little section of the bottom bobble stuck to the top bobble, which would act as the little button section. And to do that, I'm going to use my sort of scribing circle cutter. Now, when it comes to cutting plastic, you kind of have to treat it like glass, only it is decidedly more fragile. So in order to prevent snapping off a whole bunch of extra pieces, you need to scribe the line in it for maybe 15 or 16 hours. Then you're safe to snap it off. Then we've got the general inside sphere. So the plan is to have basically two spheres stuck on top of one another. Unfortunately, there's no give in this plastic, so you can't simply compress one on top of the other. You need to shave the top one down and cut it in half. Now, this isn't something that I can simply do in my studio, so I need to pack everything up and head over to the workshop. Once there, I'll crack out my marking gauge. This is a Japanese-style marking gauge, so it is a piece of wood with a knife basically jammed in it and a little section that allows for a flat line to go across. So this will let me measure out an exact line all the way around the sphere so that I can easily snap off a centimeter or so worth of the plastic ring around the outside. This is the first time in a long time that I haven't sliced my hands open, so to prevent that from happening further, I'm gonna sand all the edges down and then carefully and calmly sawed in half. Then back in the studio, I'll use a little bit of super glue to attach the inside sphere to the outside halves of the sphere, and you're left with this delightful looking uh, sort of round spherical knight's helmet. Then I'll do the exact same thing to the bottom part and make sure that it all fits together. Now you can see that there are some pretty gnarly seams and it's pretty sharp. So I'm gonna take a little bit of green stuff to clean up all the edge lines and take them from looking like a hobo's serrated murder steak knife and transform it into a finely honed folded steel tonto fit for a Yakuza assassin. Basically, I'm just filling all the gaps with green stuff so that it is not quite so sharp and it looks a little bit prettier. I also used a little bit of magic sculpt just because I had some and variety is the spice of life. Now it's time to crack out this little delightful sucker, which is my Veritas Miniature Plane. This thing is perfect for keeping the same sort of contour as the shell. So you just run it across everything and it'll shave off everything in line with just the actual sphere. We'll never dig deeper than the bottom of the sole, so it's perfect for this kind of work. Wow. And a final sanding with various grits of sandpaper will take it down to a perfectly round and delightfully spherical sphere. Then we're ready to make the button that goes on the front. So I'm going to take another one of my baubles and attach a couple pieces onto that. Oh, oh no. This is getting demonetized, isn't it? And then once you glue that little button into the allotted button placement place, your Pokeball is essentially finished. Now, the last step is probably the most important step and one that I really should not have left to the end. The whole idea of this design was that I wanted a Pokeball that could be opened up to show what's inside of it, which meant I need some kind of hinge to hold it all in place. Unfortunately, every single thing I tried was a total failure. Eventually I reached a point where I had tried and failed so many times that my original ball was mangled beyond repair. So I started over. Fortunately, it gave me the chance to correct a couple issues that I didn't like on the original one. First, I didn't like that that button thing was rounded, so I made a flat button to go in the middle. And the hinge is just going to be... well, it's a hinge. I mean, there's nothing fancy about the hinge. It's just a hinge from a door. Turns out there's a bunch of extra hinges lying around your house if you're just willing to take a couple doors off. Hot glue is perfect to hold it in place, and then I went over the back with a little bit of magic sculpt just to hide the hinges and to blend it in a little bit better. And if you haven't gathered from my excitement opening and closing this thing, 
I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So all we need to do at this point is paint it, which is a fairly straightforward process. Prime it in gray, red top, white bottom, black trim. Now once I got it painted up, I noticed that there are a few nicks and bumps and scratches all over the body of it. So to hide those, I'm going to highlight them. I picked this tip up from Bill Making Stuff. Go check out his channel if you haven't done so already. But basically what I'm going to do is go over all the edges and problem spots with a shiny silver acrylic marker. I figured these balls get thrown about all willy-nilly, so I figured some of the shiny paint is going to get cracked and chipped in place, showing that shiny metal underneath. Top tip, if you can't hide your mistakes, highlight them. Then the final step is going to be going over the entire thing in a gloss ferrothane, and that ball is finished. Now we're on to making the inside of the ball itself, and I'm going to use plaster for this. The reason I'm going to use plaster is because I want it to be heavy. You could use foam, but I want to keep the weight of the ball towards the bottom of the ball so that it should be able to stand up on its own. So I've mixed up a nice big batch of plaster, which I will fill one of my spare bottles with. Then once the plaster is cured, I'm going to take my persuasion tool and ever so gently coerce the plaster out of the mold. And then I'm left with this delightful spherical nice. plaster half ball. Then the only thing left to do is to carve a slope for the water. And you can absolutely do this with a knife, but I have these beautiful chisels and I kind of wanted to feel like Michelangelo carving marble. Now a little hot glue in the bottom of the pokeball will hold the plaster in place. And once it dries, you're left with a delightful little headless bobblehead. And then we're on to making everyone's favorite electric banana rat. Step one is going to be building a tiny armature out of wire. Step two is making a yellow peanut. Step three is that shape. Step four is some arms. Step five is a head. Step six is a tail. And step seven are some ears. And that's basically him done. Then the only thing we need to do is paint on the rest of his face. So a couple little red dots for his like cheeky blushy dealies. Some tiny black dots for his eyes. A teeny tiny black nose. And then what I like to refer to as flashback pupils. Then we need to paint the tips of his ears black and add little racing stripes on his back. So if this is Pikachu at the beach, then obviously he's going to be kicking back with a tiny drink in hand. So what I'm going to do is take this tiny acrylic tube and turn it into a tiny acrylic cup. And you can't have a tiny acrylic cup without a tiny plastic straw which will get glued in place, and then the whole thing can be handed off to our teeny tiny Pikachu. And then I decided that it would be more fun if he was drinking out of the cup. So I'm gonna reposition it so that he's drinking out of the straw. Now all he needs is something to kick back on, so obviously we're gonna make him a deck chair. And if you're gonna make a crappy plastic deck chair, then tiny crappy plastic sheets are ideal. So then it's just a case of cutting the plastic card down into thin strips, gluing said strips into a semi-deck chairish shape, and then you have a tiny plastic deck chair. Now it has been a long, long time since I've been to the beach. I mean, it's been a really long time since I've left the house. But I distinctly remember that beach umbrellas were very much a thing. So we're going to make Pokemon-sized beach umbrella. Essentially, you cut a circle, divide it into eight sections, then cut the tips off so that it is a little bit more umbrella-y. Then you cut one of those triangles out and glue it together. And then you can stick it on a little pole and then paint the sides and you have a delightful little beach umbrella. Then we're ready to start basing the base of our ball. So a little Mod Podge thinned out with water, then you raid your kitchen for the fanciest sieve you have and a teeny tiny teaspoon. Then you can ruin both for the sake of adding fake sand to a tiny poke ball. Finally, spray everything with a nice coating of 50-year-old Macallan Anniversary Malt before fuck? locking it in place with thinned out Mod Podge. If you haven't got any malt whiskey handy, you can always just use isopropyl alcohol. Then we're ready to start adding our water effect in. So to make the little watery, oceany bit on the beach, I'm just going to use a little bit of two-part epoxy resin. Then once I have the requisite amount measured out, I can add teeny tiny drops of dye in until I get the color I'm after. Important rule of thumb is that you can always add color, you can't take it away. So start with a thinner color and add more in as you need. Then it's just a case of pouring your resin in. If you were semi-smart and you sealed it, then it won't leak down through the bottom. But if it does leak, then you just need to add more resin in. Simple as that. Now, while the water is still wet, I'm going to add some teeny tiny stones and rocks in just to liven up the beach a tiny bit. 
Then once it has cured overnight, I'm ready to start painting in my Mod Podge waves. So all I'm gonna do is coat the entire resin surface in some high gloss Mod Podge, and then I'll take my straw and blow some ripples across the surface of the water. When this dries, it'll be perfectly clear and it'll look like a lovely little ocean scene. Now I've also made a teeny tiny life preserver that I will drop in place, and then just to liven up the beach a tiny bit, I'll add some little tufts of grass, bushes, and a couple more rocks. Once the Mod Podge has dried, I can start adding in a little bit of white around where the water will be breaking over the sand, a little bit of wave formation on the rocks, and then a little bit of white water up around the top of the beach. Then we can start adding in all the little pieces for Pikachu. So I made him a tiny surfboard, his crappy little white deck chair, he'll be sitting in there drinking his drink, and then I drilled a tiny hole to put our umbrella in. Then I'll add a tiny bit of grout sand around the surfboard and the umbrella just to help blend them in. At this point it still felt a little too quiet so I made a, a teeny tiny sand pail, one of those quintessential red Coleman coolers we all had growing up, and a little blue towel. Then I got thinking that it might be kind of fun to make an even smaller Pokeball to go inside our bigger Pokeball. So I made that and I hid it in the grass. Then I thought it would be even more fun to make a smaller, smaller Pokeball to go in the side of the smaller Pokeball. So I did that, but I forgot to film the whole thing, so you'll have to take my word for it. Other than that though, we are, uh, we are on to our glamour shots. As always, a big thank you to my patrons who make these silly videos possible, and a shout out to my newest patrons, Sonia Saint-Germain and Ian Balfour. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't subscribed yet, well, now just seems like a swell time to do so. Don't forget, liking and sharing this video goes a long way in helping me make more silly videos just like this one. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers.